Hello everybody and welcome to part one of Dry Creek. This is down in the Four Corners area and um, this is block-in day. So this is going to be a lesson in um, palette knife painting, but today we're doing the block-in with great big brushes. I think what I'm, I used today was basically a number 12 and um, blocked all this in basically with a number 12. So today's block in a very important foundation step and uh, you can learn everything about foundation in the next 33 minute tape. So with that, uh, I think that's all you need to know about getting started today. We're using a basic palette again. You can find out more about that at georgecallgreatart.com and um, you know I'm going to push the same old stuff I'm always pushing. There's two other things besides painting every week with me or your paint group. And that is to get outside and paint called plein air. And the other thing is get critiques from reputable people that uh, don't rip you apart. They want to, you want people that uh, you can relate to and can relate to your art. So um, with that, I think I've said enough, enough listening to me. Let's go ahead and get started on today's painting. Thanks for coming by. Bye-bye. Good morning and welcome to part one of Dry Creek. This is a place down by Four Corners in the New Mexico side going into Cortez. And uh, I think I was coming back from one of the shows down south. And uh, <clears throat> decided to go through Cortez and then up into um, Durango, Silverton area. And uh, it's a real simple design uh, composition, and that's why I chose it today for the knife. This is going to be a knife painting, but we're going to start with a block in with brush. That's why I got a, a number 12. I probably won't be using the 8 so much, but I've got a drawing brush, which is a, looks like a number 4. It's kind of worn out. And... Um, this is probably the knife I'm going to use the most uh, during this session. I don't think this is going to be a three session painting just because this is a 24 by 36. It's just a lot of canvas. It's a lot of acreage as we say in our business. And it's going to require I think more than three sessions that I'll go into next week. Uh, you can find this reference on georgecallgreatart.com under photo references. Or you can be on my student list and get them for free. Alrighty, so I've got the lights on. I turned off the fan for the, the heater. And I think we're ready to get started. So I want to start this like other paintings and uh, map it out. So I'm going to use my, my number four drawing brush. And I'm going to make a gray, so I'll get some blue, gray, and some dirty white. As you can see, I have a clean pile, and what was ever left over from the previous day, I use it because I've got it contaminated. With that, I'm going to add some Naples. I've got kind of a warm gray now. I thoroughly mixed it and I've made a big pile. And I'm ready to get my brush in there. Better start my timer. All right, so we started on time. I can keep track of this. All righty, so I'm going to get a little bit of turp on my brush. And boy, it's a stiff old brush. And you don't have to have anything special for just drawing lines. So I want to choose a foundation line which is above center. Right across here seems to be kind of a delineation between foreground and these mountains in the back. And I'm going to say that's above center. And here's my above center. Oh, 
All right, so I'm going to say this is three-fifths and two-fifths above. And from that, somewhere down here, I have a stream that comes over to here and here. And I'm going to move the stream over a little bit more because I have a elongated canvas. So one of these I better choose. It's <laughs> the nice thing about a wheels if you don't like what you put down, you can move them over. So what I did was just dip my paper towel in some turpin, moved it around. I'm going to make some rough ideas of where these mountain should be. I'm going to bring this line down a little bit. I have too much foreground. You never know until you get it on canvas. Now, Dan Young, who I've taken some workshop from, he's so good at drawing stuff on, you know, a sketchbook. And I really recommend doing that. And I never got him to have it because every time that I did it. I still have to do the same thing and work it out here on my canvas. Alrighty, so... I'm drawing some lines here of where these fellows should go. Getting this big guy in. And then over here is background mountains. And I have a few hesitation lines here, I better clean that up. What I like about this, there's some definite shaping going on here. I like what they have. Kind of a step down. And I'll try that. And there is a definite line. Now I don't want to make this too big or too small. This big object of the whole painting, this fella. So that's why there's hesitation lines here. And I know there's a bit of an angle on top. And that looks good. Now, there's some honking big bushes here. They come in here and they're dark on the bottom. Smaller bush down here. See how I'm making these canopy shapes, these curves? And that's how I'm making my distinctions here. And I'm going to bring in some more behind it. I'm going to get back and take a look at this and get a good perspective of it. And so far, so good. I'm a little bit hesitant here. See if we're okay. I think we're okay. Problem is, I'm longer than the, the reference is. I and mean, if you look at the reference, it's kind of one, one and a half, and I'm, I should be there. Huh. Anyway, there's also a shadow line down here. And this is the big fella here. Okay, so we're mapping out this thing where it should be on the canvas. And it looks pretty good. You know what I didn't do this morning was get myself a cup of coffee so I could, when I step back, that's when I take my coffee. Now there's also kind of a cliff right here. Bushes on top and some sort of a cliff thing going on in here. There's some real broken darks here. I want to make notes of that. 
And there's also a bank. See, there's a... And that's what that double line is. This will be the angle bank. See, this is the angle. Just maybe putting that on the canvas so you kind of understand what that is. Well, I've got a lot of territory over here now that I don't have on the reference. So I'm going to make some ideas here that these are going to be some shrubbery coming off here too. A slight angle. And I'll flatten them as they... Here's my lines that kind of help my brain figure out this is more level, this is more angled here. And it's just a way for me to say to myself, this is what I'm going to do in this area. So I'm going to have bushes over to here, and I'm going to have some junipers up in here. And I might as well put more junipers in places to fill in some of these gaps in here. Or whatever they are down there. Kind of like creosote type things. I call them junipers or creosotes. Alright, so that's my basic foundation. And if you Zoomers would like to unmute and ask any questions, this is a good time to do it for layout. Because this is a huge important step. You don't want this too high, too low. You want to be happy with where it is on your canvas. I'm picking up my product gray warm mixture and putting it over to one side. And what I'm going to be doing is mixing up a blue, a, a green, so it's I'm basically doing a yellow and blue. And you see, that's a good, rich, dark blue, that mixture. It's just lovely using this uh, stuff right here. It's just really great. And uh, you can even make it really dark. Now, make up a lot of this stuff. If you're working on a 24 by 36 like I am, you want to make a lot of product. And <clears throat> I am going to try to get as much as I can off there. And I'm going to go in to this with some turp on my brush. I'm using my big number 12 and I'm going to go smack. There we go. I need more blue. I'm going to throw a little red in there to give it some darker body. I just threw in some red and look. Oh, that did it. <laughs> nice. So we have done our first darkest value. So we'll get some darks in here also. And there's going to be some bushes over in here. Now, very lightly, I'm just with a lighter stroke, with more canvas showing through, I'm laying in some of this stuff, and I'm going to put in some darks down here. This is not the this is the base color, maybe the very bottom of the uh, mixture is going to be right in here. And I just added more red, and you can see it even made it darker. And I'll throw some up in my troopers. All right, so let's see if those are in the right place. And so far, so good. All right, so we're 13 minutes into this thing. And let's move this off and around to a different place. And let's make some yellow, some Naples, a little bit of Viridian, and just a little bit of blue. Okay, so that was yellow, 
which is a, a lemon yellow, a Naples, a touch of Viridian, and very little blue. Let's go back in with that brush of ours. Try to get some of that dark, dark out of it. These bigger brushes are harder to clean. And let's start getting some of this in. And I'm going to dry the top of some of these darks I put in so I can... So I'm starting now to figure out where these guys are going to be. These are... What we're doing right now is color value. In other words, values are lights and darks. And these are not the final color, but at least the thing I'm trying to get now is the right value. That's more important than getting the right color right now, because this is our base. Now I know there's going to be more bushes up over here. And the object today, and I don't know if I can do it with this big of a canvas, I don't know if I've ever tried it in 35 minutes to get the whole thing covered up, but you can get an idea of what we're trying to do here. To cover everything, I'm probably getting more turp in here than I need. This is a thin coat. And I'm going to do the same over into here. And now I'm putting in some of these fellows on the other side. This is the fun stage. Once you get your, your basics layout where things are going to be, this is your time to get a big brush in your hand and have some fun. I'm here with Don Normally in the studio, and this is a stage she has no problem with. She is, she can paint faster than anybody. So you stick a big brush in her hand, she can have that painting done in 30 minutes. Move this light over to the side, and I'm going to move into a warm color, and think about uh, creek bed and a few other places. So again, I'm going to try to get some of this green out of my brush. And since I'm going from cool to warm, I want to try to clean my palette a little better. I'm getting my razor blade scraper on that glass. I got a new razor blade set of razor blade scrapers from Amazon that arrived yesterday. Boy, yeah, get something from Amazon. It's like here in 15 minutes. It's amazing. And they're so sharp, and my glass palette has so many rivets in it. Look at it. It hits the very little rivet. So I need to dull down my knife, my knife a little bit, my new scraper. Okay, enough about my problems. Let's get into a warm color. Well, it's obvious that Naples is going to help us. We're going to add just a touch of red to it, and a touch of yellow, and a whole bunch of white. That's probably too dark, but I think that's going to get us started. And just a touch of blue. And that's what we're coming up with is a, is a pretty light color. Yeah. 
All right, with that, I'm going to get old number 10 up here again. And thin this color down a little bit, or this mixture with a little bit of turf, and get her in there. And I'm going to put her in a few other places in here. And you can see a number 10 or 12 is going to get your business done real quick. And as you can see, I'm putting some up in these upper areas also. I'm going to add some of that. Remember that original gray color we drew with? I'm going to throw some of that in there now. And what I'm going to do with that is put it on my bank. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in one second. So it's the gray mixed into your warm color. and put it in down there. I think there's some down in here too. I'm going to throw some ultra blue into that color. And I'm going to put some shadow and blue in a few places. I still have a little bit of the warm color left. I'll put that in down here. You think this number 12 is going to be fast? Wait till you guys get onto knives. You go, whoa, that's fast. I think I need to get some of this out a little bit farther here. And I need to squeeze this down a little bit more. And bring that over a little bit. Alrighty. I got a whole bunch of white coming through and off camera I'm just going to dry rub some of these white areas from the red, wet stuff around it and that will help cover up some of that white canvas. If you're not lazy, tone your canvas before you come to class and won't have that problem with whatever the base color is of your, of your painting. Okay, I got a messy mixture here so I'm going to just pick that up. And I'm going to mix it all together and see what happens. That's nice. I'm going to use some of that original color I had this morning. I'm going to go to a cool, because I'm going to move it up above. So anything that's kind of cool, I'm going to bring it together and see what I got. And that's looking okay. I can also mix some blue, ultra, and some white. And I'm going to mix some blue into this mixture also, and some white. And I think we might have something we can use as a base color for the uh, background. Oh, I lost my, my image on my screen. There we go. Still think I need some more dark up in here. I'm going to throw some gray into my blue mixture. 
blue and gray, blue, gray, and some white. So I have my two mixtures, I have a dark and a light, because up here I have a dark and a light. Try to make it simple. Let's use the light where the light is, okay? So I'm going to mix some turp in there and get some of these lights in here. So this is a stab at our value. Um, I'm making these two sides look too similar, so I don't want that. Let me do some changing. I'll make this side steeper. Sorry, I hit the camera for the Zoom students there, sorry. And so this side will be more gradual. This one will be steeper and I'm going to add more white to my blue mixture back here. And the base of these will be bluer. I don't know if that's light enough, darn it. I'm adding more white to the base of these hills. There we go. And see, it's a little bluer than this have more gray into this thing here in the hills. And this is going to go... I've got to get around to the other side of the camera to reach this deal here. Oops, sorry camera. So far, so good. This is going to be warmer. I'm going to get some paper towel action on that thing. I need to get a little warmer on that. And up here, I got to be bluer. And that's what I'm doing now. As you can see, we're using a limited palette, and you can find out more about that limited palette. On my website, I have a limited palette video. So I have blue, red, yellow. Naples and um, gray are my mixers to do various things with those three colors. The uh, addition I have today is Viridian. As you can see, I used it in some of these greens down here. And I'm going to use some of this blue right up into here. And then there's some shadow. Now up in here is kind of a gray green, so I'm going to go back to that green that I had left over from this. I added some white to it. It's a beautiful color. I'm going to add some turp to keep it thin, and I'm going to get some of that in here. Ooh, that's so pretty. It's amazing what you can do with this limited palette. You see that area up there, Don, that I'm getting to? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm painting a house. This thing's so big. 
All right, so we're about 29 minutes into this, and we've got to finish this in the next 10. Now, what I want to do here is add some interest to this sky, and um, So I'm going to make a sky design instead of just the straight blue, and that would be your choice if you want to do these beautiful blue skies that get down in northern New Mexico, down in Four Corners area. But I want to make a cloud design, and to do that, I'm going to make a mixture. I've got some of this oh, a mixture I have from this cool here. I'm going to add some white to it and a little bit of red. And it makes a nice gray color. And that's a little too dark. I'm going to add more white. And this will be my cloud design. Now I know there's lights and darks and clouds, but I'm going to just make my cloud design one value for now, just so I know where it is. So, let's see here. Let's go big here. And bring it right down almost on top. So I'll go bigger to this side. in the sucker. And you can see some I got some green left over from my contamination in my brush. But that's okay. This is blocking for God's sakes. Don't get too upset about it. And I'm just gonna leave a little bit peeking over here just a little bit and then I'm gonna Thin it out over here and have a secondary cloud here. With an angle coming in here. Okay, with that, I need to quickly finish this up in the next four or five minutes. So I need some space on my canvas or my palette to do the blue for the sky. I really like this ultra blue by Remington, or Rembrandt, I'm sorry, that uh, is a good base for blue sky. I gotta squeeze out some more white. So I'm going to uh, squeeze out some pure white right there on my palette, and oh, we got a little bit more. We have five whole minutes here, and I'm going to be mixing up the sky color. I want to make sure I get that green out of my brush. I hope I did that. So let's get a little bit of Ultra in there. And you can see I really make a thorough mixture here. I made it through in too much blue, darn it. Yeah, buy a lot of white this week for this painting. Any kind of titanium white will do any brand. It's usually one brand that a paint company can't screw up. There we go. 
move that. All right, so I'm going to load up my brush and in around these grays. Stay above the, uh, the clouds, don't go below. We're going to do a little something with that in just a second. This is when I hope my canvas is secured in there because I hate to have them pop off when I'm working off on one end and fall into my paints. I had one fall into my, my head. You can see I've got paint on the tip of my head. I went, Phew. So I'm going to try to make this a little bit more even, not so chunky, and run right into the clouds. Oop. As I said, stay above the clouds. Leave this for something we're going to do here in just a second. I'm trying to keep it thin here. Take off any excess I got. I'm going to add just a little bit of Viridian into this mixture. And I'm going to put that in down here. And a little up there too. So now you have a road map of what we're going to do with a knife as we go forward. Today if you get this and you say, oh my mountains are too high or too low, this is the time to make those changes. Okay? So, let me stand back and see what we've got. And I think we have a foundation for a good painting. Now, what I'm going to do off camera is get all these peekaboo whites I have coming through here. And I'll just get the surrounding color with a, with a brush and um, bring the surrounding color in to try to cover it. And that would be it for today. We're going to bring this one to a close with the, uh, the Zoom students or the uh, U-screeners and uh, say thank you so very much for coming by. Uh, Zoomers, you can stay on, ask questions, and we can continue this conversation as I cover up these little peekaboo holes. All right, thanks very much for coming by. Bye-bye.